Hi guys, welcome to Music Theory Grade 2. We're going to be covering clefs and compass, note values, rests and tied notes, time signature and grouping. Okay, clefs and compass. Now we did both of these in Grade 1. And really, clefs, you have to know just what you learned in Grade 1. The bass clef and the treble clef. The treble clef you can see in the top left hand corner of the screen and the bass clef you'll see in the top right hand corner of the screen. You will be expected to be familiar with ledger line notes. Remember these are the notes that sit below or above the staff in both the bass and the treble clef. Okay, even experienced musicians have trouble sight reading ledger lines so really don't worry if you need to cup, count up or down from the staff in order to work out these notes. Just make sure that you double check. For example, this is a really high note and most musicians would have trouble identifying this at first sight. So what they'd have to do is just count up. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, it's a high G. On to note values, rests and tied notes. In grade one, we learned about semi-breves, minims, crotchets and quavers. In grade two, you need to know all of these plus dotted rhythms. What is a dotted rhythm? By adding a dot to the right hand side of a note, you add half the value of the original note to the note. For example, if you have a dotted minim, you're adding half the value of the minim, which we know is a crotchet, to the minim. Therefore, in 4-4 four, four time, a minim has a value of 2 beats. A dotted minim would therefore be worth 3 beats. Okay, having said a dotted note is equal to the note plus half of the note, we can work out that the value of the dotted note will be equal to three times the value of the half note. For example, a dotted minim, I said already, would be equal to a minim plus a crotchet, which is really the same as saying a dotted minim would be equal to three crotchets. Okay, so a dotted semi-breve would really be equal to a semi-breve plus half a semi-breve, which would be a semi-breve plus a minim, which is really the same as saying a dotted semi-breve is equal to three minims. A dotted minim would be equal to three crotchets. A dotted crotchet would be equal to three quavers. A dotted quaver would be equal to three semi-quavers. And as you can see on the table, we also get dotted rests. Now the dot next to the rest has exactly the same function as the dot next to the note. It extends the rest value by half the value of the original rest. So we have another way of extending a note value and this is by adding a tie between two notes. A tie is a little curved line that connects two notes. And the notes look like two individual notes still, but when we play them, we don't play the second note. We simply add the value of it to the first note. So you can see a dotted semi-breve would be equal to a semi-breve plus a minim. And the right hand of this equation, they would sound exactly the same because, because of that tie in between the two notes we wouldn't play the minim, we'd just add its value to the first note. So you can see the dotted minim would be equal to the minim tied to the crotchet, the dotted crotchet would be equal to the crotchet tied to the quaver, and the dotted quaver would be equal to the quaver tied to the semi-quaver. Okay, so these dotted notes are equivalent in value to the tied notes on the right. You might be asking, why on earth do we have dotted notes and tied notes if they just mean the same thing? Well, the reason why we have both is to keep reading music simple for musicians. Remembering that notes need to be grouped very specifically, keeping beats separate, or at times grouping a weak beat to the strong beat that comes before it. Sometimes we use dotted notes, other times we use tie notes in order to follow these rules of grouping. 
There's an example below and it has two versions of exactly the same sounding bar. Okay, the bar on the left has a dotted note and the bar on the right instead uses a tied note. The dotted example on the left is incorrect as it groups the weak second beat to the stronger third beat. Whereas in the tied example to the right, we can clearly see where each beat falls because instead of grouping, we've used a tie. So you can see clearly the beats. Here's beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four. Whereas here, here's beat one, Here's beat two and half of beat three. Here's the other half of beat three and beat four. So it's really unclear where these beats fall. Time signature and grouping. Okay, this is exactly what we did in grade one as far as the time signatures are concerned. So remember we have four, four, which is four crotchet beats per bar. We have common time which is just another way of writing 4-4. Four, four. Again, four crotchet beats per bar. We have 3-4 time, which is three crotchet beats per bar. And we have 2-4 time, which is two crotchet beats per bar. The time signature and grouping for grade two is exactly the same as we learned in grade one. So to recap, look through the grade one summary of time signatures and grouping. And remember, the time signatures you need to know are 4-4, four, four, common time, 3, 4, and 2, 4 time. Where it comes to grouping, quavers and semi-quavers are beamed together in order to make reading more simple. Rests are never grouped to other rests. When determining each beat of the bar in order to group notes, remember that rests form part of the beat too. Group notes within a beat, but do not group notes from different beats together unless there is a strong beat first. Sometimes it is better to use a tied note rather than a dotted note as the beat may be clearer with a tied note.